good morning good afternoon good evening welcome to the moon i'm your host of this evening lawrence ray and today i'm joined by my one fantastic co-host ricardo martinez as jerry is currently throwing up um and today we are interviewing one half of uzi crypto carol who is an enthusiastic brazilian bitcoin and crypto fanatic uh, who teaches those who speak portuguese uh, and english i suppose all about bitcoin and crypto on youtube and instagram uh, Carol, it's awesome to have you here today. To the bem. To the bem, Lawrence. Glad to be here. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Awesome. Well, we're happy to happy to have you. Um, and yeah, I guess to get us started off on the on the podcast, uh, we know that you're involved in the Bitcoin and crypto world. But to kind of get us going, I'm going to ask you a very simple question: What were you doing before Bitcoin, and how the hell did you find Bitcoin and come across it? Well, I was a dentist, I had a clinic and for a long time, and I never thought about uh, flipping up my career, but I started to study Bitcoin and I fell in love, fell into the rabbit hole as well. And I started with uh, small steps and me and my partner in the clinic, I ha we had a clinic together, we decided to accept Bitcoin as payment and we try to visit other places that accept Bitcoin as payment as well. And this was like a um, shift in the in our point of view, because we started to thought about create content for Brazilians that would like to accept Bitcoin and to study about Bitcoin. And it was pretty crazy because my family didn't expect this flipping. And uh, it was amazing because I thought, uh, Dentistry is guaranteed. I already have it. I can come back if everything goes wrong. If use of crypto and our project about education goes wrong, we can go back to the former career. But uh, fortunately, it went pretty well. The project grew a lot and I'm not regretted uh, and want to come back to the dentistry. But this was uh, my career before use crypto and to um, help Brazilians to know about Bitcoin. Well, okay, so if I have any issues with my teeth, I'll get in touch while I'm here in Brazil. Um, but yeah, I suppose, um, so obviously you're a dentist and then as you say, you started like reading about and learning. Do you remember what it, like, do you remember the first time you did hear about Bitcoin? Like, what was it that, was it just someone told you or did you see about it online or, or, or what was it? Do you, do you remember? It was 2017 bull run. I got into the top, like uh, most of the Bitcoiners and I, at that time, I was thinking about investment, how to diversify my portfolio. And OK, it went down and I hodled. And that, that was a time when I started to study Bitcoin. So it was pretty amazing, this experience, because I, I am the class of 2017. And I felt everything like going up, going down, how is a bear market. And that's when I first heard about Bitcoin. But that time I was just the investments philosophy. I didn't thought about Bitcoin as a Bitcoin standard or, or how it could change the world or how it could flip a fiat system. So that's when I heard first at a bull cycle of 2017. Gotcha, okay. And so obviously you guys uh, have, have moved on a lot from 2017 when it comes to your knowledge and also what you're doing uh, in life. I say going from being dentists to basically I'd say I'm trying to think of the best way to describe you guys. I feel like you're Bitcoin teachers because um, it's like, you know, you're spreading the word. It's kind of like uh, not preachers because that's a little bit too sort of religious sounding, but teachers. Um, it's quite a big change to, to make. Um, what was it? Because obviously you said like that you you guys began to think, OK, maybe we should start like telling people about this and kind of like, you know, spreading the word and things like that. Um, but I suppose... You, you guys created like Instagram and a YouTube in, in order to do that. I'm assuming it was something you did like on the side at first, a very beginning, and then it maybe took over. Um, but I suppose like what, what made you choose the name use crypto? Is it like, uh, were you guys kind of from the beginning thinking people should kind of spend like their crypto and like learn to use it that way? Or was it more like, is it just a random name you guys picked? <laughs> That's a great question. We started uh, studying money. And we decided to use everything that is not fiat. So that's why we, the name use crypto, because 
at that time we had the the perception that everything was better than fiat money so we started to use all the cryptos all altcoins and also bitcoin but with time we started to differentiate altcoins and bitcoin and now we are, we are a project more focused on bitcoin and we talk a lot more about bitcoin we also talk about other altcoins because um, here in Brazil, there's a lot of demand to talk about other projects, and we want to show the difference to Brazilians. What is the difference between other altcoins and Bitcoin? And as an opportunity to to spread the knowledge about Bitcoin as well. So we we started use it using everything that was not fiat and trying to um, to tell people about this new market that was growing and was being created and started with Bitcoin. So um, that's why I use crypto. We felt the need also to get out of the computer and go to the real life, go to the merchants and ask, ask them why they are accepting Bitcoin or other cryptos in their business. So we started creating video contents about um, every city that we passed through, like Porto Alegre, Florianopolis, San Francisco. We've been to El Salvador uh, last year and we interview merchants that already accept Bitcoin and other cryptos at the beginning. And to show that to Brazilians, they can already accept Bitcoin and other cryptos in their business. They already can do it. So we started this journey. And also we felt the need to teach also about uh, financial education and technological education. That is the basis to, to learn about Bitcoin as well. So we started to create content, not just about usability, but also about how to deal with the volatility, how to insert Bitcoin in the portfolios, because I was already in stocks and uh, bonds, Brazilian bonds investor before Bitcoin. And I felt the need to teach uh, how to deal with money, how to deal with volatility, because it's a basis for those who want to start investing in Bitcoin and those who want to start using because the volatility can make um, a little confusion for those who want to, to use it. So we thought about why don't uh, create content about all of this kind of uh, things you need to learn before uh, start using and learning and studying uh, Bitcoin. I know Brazil has had um a high percentage of currency devaluation over the last few years. What impact has that had on people adopting crypto? Uh, we are seeing a, right now a lot more adoption. People are starting to notice the inflation problem. Here in Brazil, we have a history of hyperinflation in the 80s and 90s, but Brazilians remember, but not that much, that much. but since the start of the pandemic, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies are starting to get visibility, not just about um, the price going up, but also as an inflation hedge. This knowledge about how to protect from inflation is uh, growing. And in 2020, Brazilian real, the Brazilian currency was one of the worst in the world. So this kept the attention about how Bitcoin could help Brazilians to survive in this environment of hyperinflation or inflationary uh, moments, especially because we have this history of hyperinflation and we are watching closely Argentina and other countries that are beside us, uh, so how they are dealing with this uh, inflation problem and how Bitcoin is helping them to, to keep their purchasing power when the system fails. Yeah, I am um, from, because when I first went to Brazil, it was beginning of 2020 and, um... You've obviously uh, seen since what 2017, like how the crypto and Bitcoin space has changed. Um, but even for the two years it's been since I was first here, like it, it's changed a lot. Like I remember then looking at the different exchanges, and it was kind of like you had Mercado, Bitcoin, Foxbit, a few others, and and like the the user interfaces were pretty shit to be honest, uh, from my from my feeling. And like you could only get like five or six different cryptocurrencies. Uh, in a lot of them as well. Um, I think Binance, I think, hadn't really made a major effort either at that time. And now, like, the whole market and everything's changed. Um, 
But I, I, I saw, and one thing I always thought about Brazil was that people, um, when I visited, was that people were a lot more just like open to the idea of Bitcoin uh, than most other countries. Like when you just talk to a random person that I'd meet at a waterfall or something, I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm into Bitcoin. They're like, oh, okay. Like I've always been interested in that, but I don't understand it. And like, that's generally what I hear. Whereas in the UK, people were like, it's a scam, stay away, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh no. Um, so, and I saw a study from Visa that I think said that, um, Brazil had the most crypto curious population. I think in the, I think it was in the world, if not in uh, the Americas. Um, so I guess like how much, how much have you seen a change in people's lives around you? I guess uh, because obviously your guys' lives have changed a, a, a ton. <laughs> um, and like how much have you seen the Brazilian market like develop and and the, the crypto community develop as well uh, in the time that you've been involved? It grew a lot, especially because we have all the kinds of people impressions about Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. There are the no coiners, the economists that uh, shifted their narrative. They once said that Bitcoin was a scam. It doesn't worth nothing. And now they are creating content about Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. And there's a lot of people that thought it was a scam, especially because here in Brazil, we have a huge number of scams involving cryptocurrency. And one of the, the countries that have a, a lot more scams than others, but we are really curious, we are really open and we are really connected. I think it's the, the fourth or the fifth most connected country in the world in kinds of mobile, mobile use and internet use. That's why in social media use as well. I think that's why we're really curious and the market here grew a lot. Uh, Last year, the exchanges um, had 400% growth in volume in negotiation of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So not in um, just in content and producing uh, uh, business around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but also the exchanges grew their volume of negotiation through uh, 2021. So here it's um, uh, a good territory to grow this, the business. Our, uh, our central bank is trying to compete with Bitcoin. In my point of view, they are creating their own uh, CBDC and they are partnering with some exchanges and inclusive with uh, DeFi uh, protocols to create the, their own CBDCs. I think it's a, it's a good country to keep the eyes on because we have a good population that wants to know about cryptocurrencies. They are starting to learn. We have a business growing here and we have a currency that is not that strong and maybe it's a good place to 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 watch and see how it will evolve for us our life changed a lot because i think we we started in a good in a good moment as well we started in a bear market where the educational content was not that strong around here and speculation was more common between the content that uh, were the producers were creating and we could uh, establish a, our kind of content and create a way, a new way to create Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies content. And our project grew a lot since then. We are now with um, 100K followers in YouTube and Instagram. And it, we're really happy to see that even with the, the fall in price from November to now, there's still a lot of demand to study Bitcoin, study cryptocurrencies. They are uh, keeping on the, on, the, on the social media, asking us questions. So I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a good moment to start study, in, even for Brazilians as well. Uh, we've seen countries take different approaches to how they deal with crypto, like, for instance, China, they banned exchanges, they banned mining. El Salvador, on the other hand, has just made Bitcoin legal tender. What are the regulations like in Brazil? Like where, where do they sit? The regulations are out an asset. Uh, uh, we pay taxes over Bitcoin transactions um, that are superior to 300K reais, PRL. And the exchanges here already report to, um, to, to the government when everyone does a transaction using an exchange platform. So we are one of the countries that has um, 
already a kind of a regulation, not a specific, but from taxes, pay, payers, and from exchanges, there's a lot of uh, laws that already uh, are specific about cryptocurrencies. I guess that when Central Bank launches the Brazilian CBDC, they have held digital. Maybe the regulation will be more specific and trying to, to be more clear about how cryptocurrencies will be uh, regulated, how CBDCs will, will flow, how everything will work. Right now, it's not that clear, but it's more uh, established than other countries for good and for bad as well. Would you say that they're friendly regulations or hostile towards crypto startups and businesses? They are not hostile. They are not uh, restrict restrictive, but they are not. Uh, they are trying to compete with cryptocurrencies. They are not uh, allowing to too much to make transactions, but they are treating as an investment. They are. They don't talk too much about as payments. Yeah, I mean, any anyone can start an exchange, and and uh, generally in Brazil, right, as things currently yeah. are, like there's no like regulation around that. But yeah, as you say, there's like the, the requirement to report literally every single transaction to the tenth decimal with someone's tax number to the to the so as everything you do in a centralized exchange in Brazil is reported to the government um, every yeah. buy and sell. So I guess it's kind of regulation, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's not the most encouraged. It's not the most Bitcoin friendly regulation. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's kind of defeats the point a little bit when it's like you know everything you do is just tracked and, and traced to the government. Um, Thank mm -hmm. you.